Like many guitarists, when I started out, I was obsessed with technical guitar. I spent absolutely hours on lead guitar drills and running up and down scales. The problem came when I wanted to join actual bands and learn songs because my rhythm playing was just awful. Even at house parties, someone would hand me a guitar and I couldn't even bash out some basic songs. How did I fix this and go on to become a full-time professional guitar player? I got into this mess because I didn't see basic rhythm guitar as a glorious challenge, the same way I did when I was learning the Steve Vai solo. Rhythm guitar just felt kind of like a chore. And an older guitar player that I knew at the time, who I really respected, told me to try to think about rhythm guitar and tough, tricky rhythm guitar parts in exactly the same way that I thought about those solos. As soon as I adopted this mindset, I set out learning really tricky rhythm guitar parts and I envisioned myself being an incredible rhythm player as well as being an incredible lead player and everything started to change. So if this resonates with you at all, I'm going to show you three rhythm parts which are sure a lot harder than they sound and 99% of guitar players can't play them right. So if you can nail these parts, you're well on your way to being an absolute solid rhythm guitarist. The first one is Place Your Hands by Reef. This is probably the easiest of the three. So this is like level one, if you will. It's played in drop D. Okay, the first thing that people get wrong with this is they'll be using too much gain. Which is pretty nasty. So first of all, you just want a little bit of overdrive. And if you've got a strat, then the neck pickups. It's generally quite a warm, driven tone for this. The other thing is to make sure that you actually get the dead notes and the groove. For this motion with your right hand. This is going to be consistent throughout the whole of the riff. So you won't be going like down, up. Like that, it's downstrokes on all of the downbeats and all of the ands too. So, it's... the other thing as well that people get wrong with this is they'll play the whole chord, and it's actually not. It emits the G string from this and the E string. They're both muted. These two strings are muted, so you only have three notes in this first chord. It's a subtlety that really makes a big difference. I mean, there'd be nothing worse than playing this in open position and letting everything ring. So. And there's a double hammer on here. And you don't even want to play the A string here. It's, it's just like a little embellishment with the little dead notes in between. So there you go. The next is level two, Every Breath You Take by Sting and the Police. Now the reason this is challenging is because this is a quite a challenging stretch for a lot of players. And then also, especially down here with this minor nine. And then the, the position shift. And you have to palm mute everything, of course. The coordination is a little bit funny, and you do have to do a lot of string skipping with the right hand. So it sounds really easy, but this is actually a real caucus. Another thing on the tone is you pretty much just want to have a clean tone, but a little bit of chorus. So yeah, Andy Summers is very much a underrated guitar player, that's for sure. By the way, this is an E flat, this one. Third and final one, which is the hardest of the three, Mr. Brightside. Now, fun fact, I was told that this was actually played on a guitar that was in a weird tuning and that the guitarist for the Killers, when playing it live, just has his tech hand him the guitar, which is in the right tuning, to make it a lot more user-friendly as a rhythm part. Uh, but of course, it can be played, as I've just demonstrated, and a lot of players can play it, but it's, it's a real corker to get this right and just to get just the right amount of drive into your clean tone. Um, I'm using these humbuckers in this modded Telecaster, which seem to get quite close to the sound, going through just an emulation of a Fender Twin. If you just put a little bit too much drive, then it will not sound right, but it does have a tiny little bit of drive. So that tone is, is quite hard to get, firstly, straight off the bat. Second of all, this is a nasty shape. You're gonna use all, all four fingers in quite a kind of weird way, like this I'm gonna show. That, that's a, sh a weird shape, and then it just changes also in weird ways. And then in between the position shifts, you actually have to lift these two fingers off and then lift them off again to play open strings in between. 
There's an open string there. And of course the right hand all the while is dumping all over the place. This can be a really tough one to play, especially if you've got to sing at the same time, which as a guitar player in three piece bands, you might need to do. So it's really a shred level rhythm part in my opinion. While you're learning from the greats, arguably the greatest guitar player of all time is Jimi Hendrix. So to take not only your rhythm playing, but also your solos and your general musicianship absolutely to the next level, click this link next to learn about the man who some say invented guitar playing as we know it today.